I suppose I've always liked airplanes. When I was only three or four years old, I can remember my dad building stick and paper flying model planes for me. I went for my first plane ride when I was five years old. I began building model planes and flying those little 10 cent balsa wood gliders when I was in grade school. During World War II, I was fascinated by the combat aircraft and their pilots. I could identify any airplane by sight, and I mean any. When I was sick, I went back to building models. Airplanes and parts were everywhere. I never really gave any thought to becoming a pilot until the opportunity presented itself in the form of Clyde Hudson, our next door neighbor. So at the age of 20, I went up with Earl Steer for the first time in the left hand seat at the controls of the little air coupe. Thinking back to that first flight, I remember feeling a little nervous at first until I realized that the airplane wouldn't spin out of the sky if I made a mistake. Then I found out I could make it do what I wanted it to do. Then came takeoffs and landings, and more takeoffs and landings, practicing maneuvers, the first solo cross-country flight, and finally the private pilot check ride with Al Hain. Al was then managing the West Bend Flying Service. I believe Al has taught me more about flying in the few short years I knew him than anyone else. As a matter of fact, he also showed me how much fun it is to fly. Here was a man who really loved flying. I guess his cheerful enthusiasm was contagious. There are certain times when I'm flying when a set of conditions or a situation similar to when he was instructing would suddenly cause me to remember something he said, such as, Every flight is different in some way. Or, let the airplane do most of the work. It knows how to fly better than we do. Or, always fly by the seat of your pants and you will never get into trouble. Flying has been a tremendous confidence builder in my life. Besides being a continuous learning experience in itself, I've met a lot of interesting people around airplanes and airports, and not only because they are also pilots. When we lived in Tulsa, they discovered I could learn even more about airplanes. Sometimes flying can be a big ego trip, especially when taking a check ride with a strange instructor and having him say, Boy, you sure do a good job of flying, or you are a really smooth pilot. I imagine a psychiatrist would say this reinforces any good feelings I already have about airplanes. All of this talk still probably still leaves you wondering what in the world is so great about it. Some people would say that I assume that everyone naturally wants to fly. Guess I do. Just as a hunters, just as hunters, fishermen, golfers, or anyone with all consuming interest in a particular hobby or sport must feel about it. While it is not all that easy to describe my feelings when I'm flying, there's always a feeling of meeting a challenge. A little hint of danger, but nothing that can't be handled. Hurling across the ground, surrounded by a ton and a half of aluminum and steel until you're going fast enough to feel that weight transfer from the wheels to the wings and then into the sky, where you are no longer driving the airplane in two dimensions, but guiding it into a three dimensions is still exciting to me. Flying an airplane like the Skydivers 180 was another new thing to conquer. A feeling of more power to use was different at first. And what a trick it is to land and keep it going straight with the rudder and do it smoothly. Once mastered, you get the feeling of being part of the plane, or the plane is part of you. Hard to describe, I know you don't like operating machine machines or driving a car, but you see, I don't care much about driving anymore either. Lately, I get the sensation of being closed in all around when I'm on the road. Flying is different. Sense of freedom of movement, hands and feet pressing against the controls as if pressing against the wind itself. Sense of power. 225 horsepower under my right hand on takeoff and climbing or speed. After releasing jumpers, closing the door, closing the cowl flaps, and the throttle is all the way closed. Retired the propeller controls so a red line speed dive of 180 miles per hour can be used to get down fast without cooling the engine too suddenly. Relying on experience. 
and judgment get the plane slowly down in time to make a short approach. Half flaps down, trim, nose up, slow down, propeller back to full RPM, slower, over the wires or trees, sink in a little, add small amount of power, watching in the wind, any crosswind, 55, 50, 40, get the tailwheel down, feel the ground easing up to the tires, all power off, a perfect three-point landing. Wasn't that fun? It is for me, or I wouldn't be doing it 10 or 12 times on an average Saturday afternoon. It's just part of my life, I guess.